Welcome to the kingdom. Hello and praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Fred Morton. This is Sila Moments. I want to thank you for joining me again in these Sila Moments with Pastor Fred Moore. Thank you for all of the encouragement that you guys have given me when we run into you. And I'm so, so encouraged. My Godson and I, I want to give him a shout out because we do this together. How I've been in Waco and in Houston and people have told me, I watch you on YouTube. So thank you so much. Do us a ble be a blessing and share and subscribe. Um, the uh, Sila Moments with Pastor Moore to your family and friends. I always say, like a good restaurant, if it's ble if, it, if, if it's feeding you, it might feed them. Now, if you're in the Austin Round Rock area, we would love for you to join us in one of our exciting services Sunday mornings at 11 and then Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Listen, we're on all the social platforms. We're on YouTube. We're on Facebook. Join us. You can join us online or in person, but ain't nothing like being in person. So I want to appeal to those of you that's in this area. Trust me, we're not going to keep you long. We come in, we have church, we hear from God, and then we go home and probably take a nap. But anyway, listen, we'd love for you to come and be with us. Amen. We want to continue developing the thought, beloved, and we're going to pray. We want to continue developing the thought, holding on to hope in hard times. Let's pray. Father, again, we thank you for your word. We thank you for our time together. And we ask that you bless it, leading us by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, beloved, Romans chapter 4, verse 18, we read these words. Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God has said to him, that's how many descendants you will have. And let me just say to you, beloved, as we continue with this seal out thought, holding on to hope in hard times, we're going to continue this for about a month. We're going to stay here in this seal out thought for about a month. And I'm going to tell you why. Because, and I'm not, the news don't run our lives, but the news just informs us what's going on out there in the world. You know, I don't know about you, but I like to be in Noah's Ark while it's raining outside. So I'm going to try to stay as close to Jesus as I can. But with everything that's going on out there, I believe for this season, for this next month, God just want me to inspire hope in his people, to charge us with hope. Because every time you turn that television on, man, if you're, if you're not walking with God, it'll sap hope right out of you. So I'm going to keep us and keep in the words of the Honorable Jesse Jackson, I'm going to endeavor to do my job to keep hope alive. Now, we've covered a lot of things on hope, but we want to make sure that we understand what hope is. I told you what it's not. It's not wishful thinking and just being optimistic. We have a biblical hope. And we told you that when you have a biblical hope, according to Hebrews 6.19, that it anchors. Hebrews 6.19 says, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. And an anchor on a ship keeps it in place. See, if you if we're not careful, the world and all that's going in will make us drift in our walk and relationship with God. No, we have an anchor and that anchor is called hope, which hope we have. Not going to have, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast and which entered into that within the veil. But I want you to hear the first part of 619 where it says, which hope we have as an anchor for the soul, both sure and steadfast. Now, again, we left off with you our last time. And again, remember, we're going to continue this for the next two weeks as well. So stay with us. Hope, by definition, again, it means a strong, confident expectation to anticipate or expect with pleasure, to expect or anticipate with pleasure. I changed the words. Hope scripturally means a strong, confident expectation. And let's remember the condition that Abraham was in. Abraham is an old man and God is talking to him about a kid. And yet he had a strong, confident expectation. And he wants you and I to have a strong, confident expectation. Then we told you another definition of the word hope means to trust in wait for, look for, or desire something or someone to expect something beneficial in the future. Psalm 62 confirms these definitions when it says, 
My soul wait thou only upon God for my expectation for him. That's Psalm 62, 5. Proverbs 23, 18 says, For surely there is an end, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. So I don't want you and I to ever lose our expectation. Let me just say this to you, beloved, and then we'll continue this. Listen, in these days, I want to encourage you. You walk as close to God than you ever did before. Because, listen, the only good news is the gospel. You won't find it on ABC. You won't find it on CBS. You won't find it on CNN. You won't find it on CNBC. See, the gospel, one of the definitions of the gospel is called good news. Are you listening to me? It's called good news. And I want you to join me as I continue these next two weeks, inspiring us to hold on to hope. Listen now, hold on to hope even in hard times. I don't know everything that everyone is going through, but I'm telling you to be like Abraham. Abraham is the father of us all. And again, we want to be like Abraham. And as it says to him, it said of him, brother, even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping. And the next word says, believing. Abraham kept hoping, believing. See, sometimes you just got to say, I don't know how, I don't know when, but I know the who. And the who keeps me hoping. Who is that? My God is the God of hope. You join me as we continue the next couple of weeks, holding on to hope in hard times. Thank you again for joining me. Love, peace, and blessings, beloved.